people, welcome to another video. Today's video is on engine cleaning. This happens to be a 2013 Mercedes-Benz C-Class. It has 50,000 miles of accumulated dirt and grime. So a couple of things is you will hear and see endless videos and all these warnings about detailing your engine, how it is good or bad. What I want to address is all the bad stuff. There's so much bad information. People talk about the alternator. You can't get it wet. It's going to damage it. You've got the fuse box. You've got, I've just heard so many things as to, oh, don't ever get water on your engine. Don't ever clean it. I've been doing this 30 years. I've never had a problem except two situations. And those are on very old cars with old technology. This was prior to uh, electronic ignition prior to fuel injection. I'm talking old school back in the, as in these cars were either made in the sixties or made in the seventies. Cars today are vastly different and all the connectors as a rule are tightly connected and sealed and watertight. So you do want to do a general inspection and see what you're kind of dealing with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some basic common sense, which is if I look at a part and I determine that, okay, this might in fact be sensitive, then maybe what I will do is I'll pull back. I'll use a little less water, less pressure, whether I'm using a pressure washer or just a garden hose, doesn't matter, I'm just going to pull back and apply common sense. Cleaners, there's many types of degreasers you can use. In this situation, I'm gonna use one of my favorite products. This is the Crystal Simple Green version. Now check this out. Biodegradable formula, non-abrasive, concentrated, VOC compliant, non-caustic, non-flammable, rinses residue free. It would be hard to find a cleaner that's effective with that many winning features to it. What I really love about it also is that it's a concentrate, which means when it comes to an engine versus my wheels and tires versus maybe some upholstery cleaner, I can custom blend it to suit the needs of the moment. In this moment, it's a very dirty engine, so I will dilute it maybe down one to one, which means half concentrate, half water. Let's examine our tools for the moment. We've got this pressurized sprayer. I love this because on a regular trigger sprayer, I'm not gonna wear out my forearm in the excessive amount of spraying in order to completely saturate this engine with cleaner. I could pick basic brushes. Now, as a rule, my brush choice are gonna be long bristles because there's so many intricate parts of the engine. I want long bristles that are softer versus stiff. So you've got two choices. They're really the same, one just happens to be on extension handle so I can reach out across the engine and not break my back. Now I have a leaf blower. Why a leaf blower? Because after we do the cleaning and we pressure wash it off, I wanna blow the excess water off prior to starting the engine. In this case, I will be using a pressure washer, although it's not required. The trade-off is, is that I have uh, concentrated pressure, which will aid in knocking off the dirt and the degreaser itself. If you have just a garden hose, simply attach a nozzle to it that has a stream pressure to it and you can in fact get the same results. You just may have to go into uh, repeated application mode in order to break down the dirt enough that the pressure washer itself can blow off. Now with that said is once again common sense. I'm not going to hold this at one inch away from any part because it will blow a hole in certain things. So you pull back and that's where you can literally feel with your hand. You start from a distance and you determine the kind of pressure that's coming out of your particular pressure washer that you've chosen. Now the basic operating procedure is this. You start on a cool engine. It can be slightly warm, but one of the main reasons you don't wanna use it on a hot or do this on a hot engine is twofold. First off, any chemical that you apply on a hot engine is gonna flash dry. Once that chemical dries, it becomes inactive. Secondly, there would be lots of fear because you've probably heard or seen other videos that they talk about if you were to put water on a hot engine, it's going to crack the block or it's gonna crack metal parts. Whether that's true or not, who knows? The point is, is just do it on a cool engine, particularly so your chemicals do not flash dry. 
What I do like to do is a pre-inspection. I like to check out where the really excessive dirty parts are on this engine. That will be a case by case. You have accumulation of dirt that's combined with an oily type of residue. So this is where you need to assess. Also, up here at the front, often you will get some dry debris uh, in the form of leaves, pine needles, that kind of stuff. It is better to remove that first before you introduce any liquids or solutions to the mix. My rule is that I'm gonna clean the bottom of the engine first because what would happen is if I'm cleaning the hood, that solution's gonna drip down, and as I'm washing the hood, that's going to make the bottom of the engine all wet. So as I introduce my chemical, it's gonna naturally become more diluted because there's water sitting there. So I wanna get the main part of the engine, the really, really dirty part first, then I'm gonna go up on the hood. Now the hood in this case has a felt liner, a felt insulating pad. Yes, that can get wet, but you need to inspect yours because some of them, like on the American cars, they will begin to separate and bubble up. You will need to know that you will need to apply additional caution on those moments. But up here, the same holds true with down below. We've got all these areas that you need to scrutinize and you need to assess as to what needs to be cleaned. This would be a perfect moment where you apply the solution and you bust out a, a brush to break it loose prior to rinsing it off. I think I've covered all the cautionary moments, so let's get started and you can watch me in action. At this point, if I've identified that there's some tricky areas that need to be scrubbed, I'm gonna go along and I'm gonna scrub these areas. This is what I mean when you're testing your pressure washer. Bring your hand like this, and you can feel what kind of pressure is being put out. I would never go point blank with my hand or any of the engine parts, but that's how you test is you go way out here and you slowly move your hand forward and you can determine what kind of pressure that you're working with. to the point where I'm ready to start the engine, you will see that there is in fact still some wetness to the engine. A couple things I want to note to you guys is A, if you're a car owner, or B, you're a detailer doing this for another uh, car owner, is that for example, my conclusion with underneath the hoods is that they paint them, but they don't clear coat them. So what will happen based on the type of cleaner that you use, you may get some streaks on the paint. This is not a caustic degreaser, so it's really not an issue. But I still have some paint that's wearing off here. I also have some lines here because where it butts up against the seam down here, it has now worn the paint off of here. When the dirt's there, it covers that up. Now that the dirt's gone, it reveals it. So this is where you need to manage your expectations of like, oh, that possibility exists. Secondly, for example, there's still dripping going on down here. It's still collecting some dirt. So after you start the engine up, 
and it uh, maintains or raises to the operating temperature and you have complete dryness of your engine, you may have to come up and touch up these couple of areas where the water wants to continue to drip or it has dripped and now it's dried some additional dirt there. No big deal, just address it after the fact. Very, very important part of this moment is, in case you've been using a rag, a brush, whatever, you want to scan your area first before you start it up. The last thing you want is a rag laying there that you inadvertently forgot about and now it gets sucked up into a fan belt or some other component of the engine. Also as a note, occasionally on certain cars, you will get a little belt squeal at the beginning. Just know that that will go away within the first 20 seconds or so. I've never really had a long-term problem with that as far as it lasting for the first 10, 20 seconds. I'm gonna let this run for about uh, 10 minutes. That's, and you can check the instrument cluster to see that it's raised to the normal operating temperature. At that point, you're good to go. You touch up the uh, remainder of the areas around it. What I would like to know from you guys is your feedback on cleaning engines. What have you heard? Uh, all the horror stories. Oh, I need to tape up or I need to cover up the alternator. I need to cover up the uh, air intake. I've got to cover up, let's say the spark plugs. Literally, I've heard anything and everything. So I'd like to know your feedback as to some of the horror stories that you guys have heard. And with that said, I'll end there and we'll see you on the next video.